Hi, I'm Chuck Fall, and I'm the Director of Service for Ready. And I'm new to the team and bring on a breadth of experience for this team within the ag business. So today we're working on a John Deere 1850. It's a, a 68-row unit. We're actually doing multiple things to this drill. So one of those being is the main open arm pins and bushings. The main um, thing that we're going to be doing tomorrow is main opening arm pivot. And so that includes the bushings and the pins. And so what happens there is, is the row uh, tends to get sloppy and, it, and um, it will not track the way you want it to. That will tighten up those rows really well and, uh, and really give you the biggest bang for the buck. What I'm going around and doing is in inspecting uh, the hubs on this, and then what I'm doing is just grabbing the disc and, and pulling it back and forth. And what I'm checking for is play in that hub, and I can determine whether the bearings are, are loose or they're actually bad. So in this case here, we've got a pretty extreme case of, of how loose this, these hubs can get. So when I go in here and wiggle this back and forth, you can see the amount of play happening um, on that on that hub and that's something that definitely has to be addressed um, before it goes back in the field otherwise they'll seize up and also the accuracy of the blade in the in the dirt is is going to be compromised so we definitely need to address that um, we're also when we look at these we're, we're trying to check to see if um, any of our row units are bent and are also the, the closing wheel arm if it's bent or not. And the, the easiest way to check that and to gauge it is actually gauge it against the others um, of, or the average on the drill. And what I'll do is actually check this gap between the firming wheel and the, and the closing wheel. And if it's one or two fingers wide, um, we're probably safe. If it gets more than that, or if it gets to be more than probably the average, then you know that you've got a bent arm and you need to address that as well. So if you go from this one here, which has got very little gap, all of a sudden you come to this one here and there's a significant gap, if you can see my fingers down there, uh, between that firming wheel and also the, the, the closing wheel. So one thing I'll check is make sure maybe this arm is bent. Um, that's a possibility as well. Um, so I have to confirm whether or not this is bent or if this arm is bent. And I think in this case, this particular case, I think in this case, it's this arm that's bent um, because you can see it's not riding on the seed tab. Uh, and so we're, we're replacing these arms anyway, so that will get fixed up at that point. So I initially thought that this might be bent, but I think it's more of the case is it's this arm here. Putting in greaseless bushings in these in this joint here or in this pivot, and uh, and the reason being is is this arm gets really loose and no, no longer tracks and closes your furrow like you'd like it to, and it, as you can see the movement in that closing wheel arm, and it definitely makes a big difference uh, in the end product when you get that tightened up, and that's that's exactly why we're here. We're going to tighten up that joint.
out in Barnesville, Minnesota, and we're, we're taking care of our customers' 1850 drill. And one of the things we are trying to accomplish is changing the main opener arm pins and bushings. So when we do that, we're using several tools. And one of them being an air hammer to drive out the pin, uh, another being uh, an impact with uh, 15 sixteenths and a wrench with 15 sixteenths to take out the pinch bolt. Uh, once we do that, we can drive the pin out, the air hammer, or with any other sort of uh, impact uh, type of, uh, of tool. Once you have the pin out, you can move the main opener arm up and out of the way to where you can insert the, the install tool that we've uh, been using. And it's really all it is is a bolt and a nut with, uh, with a bearing on it to actually protect the rotating parts when we're putting a lot of torque on that component. And what we do is take that, that install tool and have both bushings on either side of the joint. And when we run the impact gun down, uh, uh, we, we actually are pressing those uh, new bushings in while the old bushings are being pushed out. It happens all in one action. It's smooth. It's, uh, it, it takes a little bit and we use a three quarter air wrench to do that, uh, be, mostly because of the, uh, the torque that's needed and also in the amount of impacts that are needed to do that. We're using an inch and seven eight socket on the uh, three quarter drive air impact and we're using an inch and seven eight wrench that we've cut off uh, so it's you're not handling a big large wrench and you can usually let that come in contact with the frame at some point and hold that part of the joint while you're doing it. Once we've done that, once we've put those bushings in, we've got them flush with the ears and we're careful not to install them too deep. Um, using washers on either side of the bushing, the new bushings that you're installing will keep you from going too deep into the joint. Now once we've done that, we can put the, uh, the arm back up in place and push the new new pin in. Careful for the washer uh, placement and it's always going to be on the disc side of the arm and uh, that will uh, locate your pin in, uh, or your arm in the correct location. And then when you line that up, you, you run your pin in, depending on which direction you're going with the pin, you could uh, run the, the pin through the opposite direction and then line up the washer or you can line up the washer at the beginning uh, coming in from the other direction and engage the washer and then engage the pinch uh, joint uh, going through. Um, it's usually, if everything is clean, uh, it, it goes fairly smoothly and uh, doesn't need a lot of persuasion. There will be some joints that'll actually take a little bit more effort, uh, but in most cases, it's, it goes pretty smoothly. And then once it's together, we're going to um, uh, reinstall and, uh, and align the pinch bolt uh, and torque that up into place. And, and that joint is completely restored and back to a uh, new condition, if not better. So what we have, right, is this is a pin and bushing is, uh, bushings that we've already removed. And one of the reasons why we're out here is, is to replace these pins and bushings. Uh, you can see the wear that has happened here and here. And then you can see these bushings are, are really loose on this shaft. We're gonna just, we tighten up this joint by replacing these parts. With, with Needham Ag, you know, when you order a pin kit uh, and pin and bushing kit, you get these two pins, four bushings, and two washers. So what we're doing here is replacing this pin with these new bushings, uh, and they're an extended wear uh, uh, bushing and pin set. And this makes a significant improvement on, on the play that's happening in the main opener arm. Um, also in the kit is, the, uh, is a new washer, spacer washer, that actually uh, um, goes in between the main opener arm and the pinch joint. Uh, and, and it actually sets the row in its correct location. So that's what we got. Well, from all of us at Ready, we thank you for watching and uh, we, we are out here to keep farmers farming and uh, make sure to follow us on all the social media sites.